Hi, Peter Russell here from supertax.ca. Welcome to another one of my video blogs. This is a continuation on my walkthrough of an example of a capital gain on the disposition of a rental property. Now in this example, we are changing a bit of the terms in that instead that we're not we're instead of making money on the disposition of our rental property resulting in a capital gain, we are actually incurring losses on the sale of our rental property in this example. So I am going to swing over to the big board. Now you've probably seen this example before in the last video. It's pretty much the same figures. Our, our John's, uh, calculate, John's calculated ACB of this property is 306,000. We're still splitting 80-20 building land. So our beginning UCC for our building is still $244,800 and the land's ACB is still $61,200. we are still selling in 2010 and we still have a UCC at the start of 2011 of $221,095. Now, instead of selling for $450,000, we have sold the home for only $215,000. Maybe the market was bad. For whatever reason, we could not sell this property for more than $250,000. It cost us $10,750 in commissions and it cost us $2,000 in legal fees. So our net proceeds is $202,250. We've definitely lost money this time. Now we've got to determine our capital loss on the land portion and what we call a terminal loss on the building portion. So to start with the land, what we would do is we take 202, 250, our proceeds, times 20%, less our calculated ACB of 61,200, giving us a capital loss of $20,750. Now this capital loss can be carried forward uh, indefinitely in, or carried back against taxable capital gains three years. Now, the building portion, we're going to end up with something called a terminal loss because we've taken depreciation on the building portion of our rental property and it's the only asset in our class. Once it's disposed of, we can take a terminal loss. So how do we calculate that? If we go here, $202,250 times 80% less our ending UCC, which is $221,095 giving you a capital loss, sorry, a terminal loss, which can which is $59,295. Now what's different between a terminal loss and a capital loss? Well, a capital loss you can only use against taxable capital gains. You can carry them back three years and forward indefinitely. In this case, you can deduct your terminal loss against any other income in the current year. So this would this would be shown in, in this example, the terminal loss would be shown as a negative figure on line 127 of your T1 General Canadian, Canadian Income Tax Return. Line 127. The capital loss would be carried forward until, like I said, back three years or carried forward indefinitely until you had a taxable capital gain to use it against. That's the difference between a terminal loss and a capital loss. Okay, I hope you found this informative understanding what a terminal capital loss is when it comes to a disposition of a rental property and the use of a capital loss on a disposition of a rental property. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment below or you can send me an email at peter at supertax.ca. Thank you very much. Take care.